Hello and welcome back to this channel. So today's tutorial is going to be about how to create a seamless pattern tile using Adobe Fresco and Adobe Capture. So before I begin this tutorial, I just want to tell you that this is a new feature in Adobe Fresco. So that means you have to go ahead and update your app before you can use this feature. Okay, so let's just get started. I'm going to go ahead and open up an artboard that is small postcard. If you cannot see it, you can click on custom size or you can also click on create new, go to print and this is small postcard, just click on it. First, let's go ahead and draw our illustration. It's some simple illustration that I've chosen and for the color palette, I'll share it with you. You can go ahead and download it. So just go to your photos and bring in your color palette. Click and hold to select the color and tap outside. Once you're done, you can just click on that layer and delete it. The one with the color palette, just hide it. Okay, let's start illustrating. I'm going to be using only vector brushes for this illustration. And let me just go ahead and quickly draw these things out. If you want to follow, you can watch it as well. Otherwise, just skip to the next part. So I use the fill tool to fill it in. Click on a new layer and click on a clipping mask. And I'm going to add some, oops, go back to your brush and I'm going to add some spots. Okay, I'll go back to this layer and I forgot to add a tail. So I'm click and select this color and add a tail. Now let's go ahead and click on a new layer and let's make some trees. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the brown and you can draw anywhere you want. Click on a new layer. Just going to go back and check this layer. Go ahead and erase this rogue stroke. Let's select a light green. I don't see it here. Maybe I missed it. Go back to this layer. Click on a new layer. Take the darker green. Next, let's click on a new layer. Let's go to the top here. I'm going to go ahead and use this same brush, same color, and choose a lighter one. And now I could do something else as well, maybe a bug and a sun. So let me go ahead and choose yellow and make sure that all your artwork is on a different layer. That's really important. Click on a new layer. Let's choose a brown. All right, so I think we have drawn all our elements. You can go ahead and draw more, but the thing is, I should mention this, that the Adobe Capture has some limitations now because since it's a new feature and I think they're going to take some time to develop it into a better pattern making tool. So until then, we just have to work with what we have. So the maximum number of elements it allows right now is about four, if I'm not wrong. So we already did five. I think I forgot to add an I to this beta. So once you're done with it, what I usually do is since I have a lot of layers here, for example, this animal here has two layers, the tree has one, two, three layers. We need to actually merge them together to create one single layer. But I don't want to edit this one because I want to keep it for, uh, I don't know, if I want to go back and edit these things later, it would be very nice if I can come back and use this file. So I'm just going to go back into the gallery, click on these three dots and click on duplicate. Now click on the duplicated version. So now I'll just click on this clipping mask and click on merge down. So now this is one layer. So that's what we're gonna do for these as well. So now each element is on a different layer and that's exactly what we want for this. So once you're done drawing all your elements, you just have to click on the share button, click on publish and export. And now you see there's something new which says capture pattern. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. Click on the capture pattern. Like I told you, if you don't see it, go ahead and update your fresco first. Click on that. 
and now it takes you to Adobe Capture window. So if you don't have Adobe Capture, you can install it for free. Make sure you sign in using your Adobe ID on both Fresco and Capture. Getting an ID on Adobe is super simple. It's also free, so make sure you sign up for it. So once you have this, you just have to select the elements that you want. As you can see, since I had this all on different layers, they have come up as different elements. So if you had merged these two into one single layer, they would have come as one single element. Okay, now that we have selected everything, click on done. So it opens up this page where you can see the pattern. As you can see, if you click on the shapes here, you can see all the elements that we have chosen. That is one, two, three, four, five. But here there are only one, two, three, and four of them because that's a maximum allowed in capture right now. So once you have that, now you know that you have all these things, but you might want to shift something. So what I can do is I can just click and hold and bring and drop it here to change that element. So the same thing here, I can actually click and hold and drop it here to change that element. So that way you can arrange these things in any way you like by dragging and dropping them wherever you want. Okay. And the next one, let's go to layers. So here you see all the elements which you have on the artboard. The only two things it allows you to do right now. One is you can click on some element and delete it, but it also deletes all other instances of it. The other option is to transform it like you can... You can turn it around. You can also reduce the size if you want and stuff like that. So it lets you do those things as well. You can do the same thing for each of these elements. So just arrange them the way you like. Okay, let me just go ahead and click on this or this icon here so that you go into this mode and out of the transform mode. Now let's go to these levels. In levels, you see that there are a few things here. One is shape and it says show shape if you turn it off that disappears and the one is show grid. If you turn it off, that disappears as well. Uh, we can keep it right now because it can be quite helpful. So dim preview is nothing but if you increase the brightness, all the surrounding areas get highlighted, but we don't need that because we need to know what is our pattern tile right now. So another option is background. Right now, these things don't have a background. You can always choose a background and use this to choose any color that you want for your background. But I would highly recommend that you turn off the backgrounds because it's so much easier to control the color later when you have the pattern tile ready. And if you're wondering what is this pattern tile? Okay, pattern tile is basically the building block of a pattern. You just have one simple tile and you arrange them side by side to form a whole new seamless pattern. Okay, let's look at shapes now. This is the square. As you can see, it allows one, two, three and four elements. Let's go to the next one. The next one allows only three elements. So it automatically got rid of something for us, but we can always go here and change it like I showed you earlier. Unfortunately, I cannot increase or decrease the size of this shape. I'm not sure why, because you can do that in Illustrator. But anyway, we have to work with what we have. So, so if this is something that you would like, then go ahead and choose this kind of a pattern. Or there's one more option here that is a hexagon and it also has only three elements. So once you've decided what you want to do with this, like all the shapes or colors and stuff like that, let me go ahead and do this. And instead of, I don't know, maybe instead of a tree, maybe let's put this one. I think that looks nice, right? Okay. All you have to do now is go ahead and click on save. So once you save it, it shows that choose a creative crowd library to save your pattern and access it in other Adobe apps. So if you sign into your account, you'll already see something here. Otherwise, you'll have so many other creative cloud accounts. If not, you can always click on this plus sign and create your own new library. So this shows up in, you know, across all your uh, Adobe apps. So that's a good thing. Okay. So one thing is you can save them. But before that, I just quickly want to show you what this is. So this lets you export this into Illustrator or Photoshop. So once you have this pattern ready, you can just directly take it into Illustrator or Photoshop and adjust this to make a pattern of any size that you want. So Illustrator has a pattern making tool and even Photoshop has it these days. So you can use both those tools to create. If you want to know how to do that, maybe I'll include a small segment at the end of this video or maybe you create a new video on how to do that for you later. For now, we're just going to save it. 
Okay, so once you save, it shows up here. As you can see, I've tried experimenting with it. So you can just click on that. And this is how your pattern will look like when it is uploaded onto websites like Spoonflower or even Redbubble and stuff like that. And you choose a repeat pattern option. So once you have that, you have again different options here. That is, you can share it and you can share, export as or save to camera roll. By the way, if you save to camera roll, it saves as a really nice pattern like this. Let's go back to capture. You can also export as, and then it gives you an option to export it as a pattern tile or an SVG. So we would choose something called as pattern tile. You can also choose SVG, it's totally up to you. They both give the same thing anyway. So let's click on pattern tile. And now you have options to either send it to your Mac, where you can use it with Illustrator and Photoshop again, or upload it onto your Spoonflower and stuff like that. Or you can save to files as well. So I would like to save to files and I'll save it on my iPad and known as pattern six and click on save. Now that it is saved, I want to show you one more thing is you can go back and edit this pattern again. Like if you don't want that to be in this way, you can edit it in a different way as well. And once you're done, you can click on save. I'll just say cancel, discard changes because I don't want to make any changes. You can always go back here and you'll also get this option to share over here. If you click on these three dots and in here, you can say export as open in. If you click on open in, it'll again show all these things. And there are a lot of things you could do with this as well. Okay, now that we have exported our pattern tile, what do we do with this? There's so many things you could do. You could also use Fresco. I'll just show you how. Let's go into Fresco now. And I'm going to go ahead and choose an artboard. And I've chosen a 6000 into 6000 pixel. Now you can just go to your images. And remember, we saved it in files. So you can go to files and search for that particular file. This one. And there it is. You can always reduce the size or increase the size depending on how small or big you want your pattern to be. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it in the corner here. And now all I have to do is repeat it around the artboard. I wouldn't actually recommend this method because you have to be so careful when you're moving this artboard around so that there are no white spaces and stuff like that. If you have a pattern tile ready, it's already ready to be put into seamless pattern areas. But anyway, using Fresco, you can just click on this, click on done. Click on this, click on duplicate layer, and now you can click on the transform tool and just bring it down so that it comes and sits like this and click on done. And now you can go ahead and scroll in and see that if there's some problem here, click on transform again, and you'll see this nice little arrows. So make sure you click like that and like that and click on done. There's a white thing again, click. Maybe one of them. Yes. So now you can see there are no gaps. And this is what you need to do when you try to move the element down or on the side. So once you have these two ready, you can just click on this and click on merge down. And now you can actually click on duplicate again and then click on this and try to move it on the side. Unlike Procreate, this doesn't have a snap to grid or any option. So you have to be really careful when you move. So make sure that you're moved in really well and click on done continue so now you can go ahead and click on this and click on like i told you it's a bit of work to make sure there are no white lines visible so okay so this is how you can actually create a pattern using the pattern tile tool in adobe fresco but you don't need to do this. Uh, let me just quickly show you what happens when we try to upload this into sites. So let me just go ahead and share this pattern tile and I'm going to airdrop it. And now I'm going to quickly show you what happens when you try to upload this into sites like Red Purple. So go ahead and bring in your artwork. That's pattern six. I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop into this field here. Okay, so it shows up something like this. Now, all I have to do is find something which can have pattern. Okay, this one, I guess. No, maybe let's do this. Enable. Yeah, okay. Click on edit. And now I'll just have to go to choose pattern and a regular grid. And I can always decrease this. And look at that. It creates a very nice seamless pattern. So it works exactly the same way for Spoonflower as well. And any other 
uh, uploading sites. And if you want to create your own pattern, you can, like I told you, you can use Illustrator. Let me just quickly show you how to do that in Illustrator as well. This is something I was trying. So I'm just going to delete that and that and that as well. And now I have a pattern tile, which is a PNG. I'll just click on that and open with Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so you have your pattern tile here. Now this is selected. I'll go to object, pattern and make. Okay, so this is how it looks like. And I think I'm okay with that. You always choose grid because you have a perfect square or a rectangle all the time and click on done. So now I'll go ahead and create an artboard, which is basically white. Now I'll copy and paste on top of it. And I'll go to my swatches. You can find it on a window swatches, by the way and click on the pattern. And as you can see, our pattern is here as well. And you can create this rectangle as big as you want, because if you know that you want a particular size artboard, use Illustrator or Photoshop to create this seamless pattern. So once you have it, you can always export it as a PNG and upload it to any of the websites or anything that you want. Okay, if you're wondering why the lighting suddenly changed, that's because I'm recording this much later because I found out how we can include more than four elements while working with patterns in Adobe Capture. So let me just quickly show you what I did here. As you can see, there are a lot of elements here and uh, that's because I use the merge option in Adobe Fresco. Let's just quickly go ahead and open Adobe Fresco now. So as you can see, I created some extra elements right here apart from the ones that we already created. And obviously you can't use all of these in your illustration. So what I did is I just dragged the layer, whichever I wanted to merge with, for example, this one with the leaf layer, I just click on it and click on merge down. And now these two are merged together. You can just look at that. And you can actually move this much closer. Click on your selection tool, select that, click on transform and, oops, should be on that layer, by the way. Click on that and transfer and place it close to each other. So that way you can arrange all the elements. For example, this is what I've done here. As you can see, this tree and these three dots are on the same layer. If I uncheck it, everything disappears. Okay, now that we have this ready and I have one, two, three, four elements only in this artboard, I can click on share, publish and export, capture pattern. Now it will give you four elements so you can go ahead and check that and click on done. And then it will give you something like this. So now you have an option here to choose whatever you want. So let me go to layers and click on this and let me just increase the size a little bit and maybe twist it around a little bit. Click on done and let's see this flower here. as well. Increase the size. Move it completely like this. And then obviously the tree. You can make it bigger or smaller. And once you're done, you can just click here and see this is the pattern. You can also click on save. And now just let's look at the pattern and you can see you've put in more than one or I mean more than four elements right now. So this is one option that you can do. And another thing you can do is to check the spacing and stuff. You can do some pre-work here in Adobe Fresco itself. For example, you can create a grid for yourself like this so that you have four corners and then you can choose a layer that you want. Click on transform and edit it so that it goes and sits nicely like this. And then you can actually mimic what you see on the screen over there and try to adjust the size or put in more elements. For example, I think there might be a blank space between here and the sun. So you can go ahead and create more elements in this one itself. So I can put in more something like this. And maybe on this layer, I feel there were things needed here. Sun had a lot of blank space. This one had a lot of blank space as well. And now you can export it, basically hide this layer. And now you can export it. Let me delete this, okay, export, capture pattern. And now you can select all of these, done. And then it'll show you more elements. So now you can adjust it in a way that 
you will get something very similar to this where there are no spaces at all and it looks like a completely nice seamless pattern. So yeah, you, this is how you can basically include more elements in your pattern. You don't have to stick to four elements as I thought you would have to. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Do share it on Facebook and with your friends on your social media so that uh, anybody who's interested in learning Fresco can actually come here and check out my videos. I guess I'll see you in the next video then. Bye-bye.